What's up everyone and thanks for joining me today. Today I want to talk about recursive queries. Specifically, I want to talk about a problem I had recently that I was able to solve by writing a recursive SQL query. So let's just dive right in. So my problem looks something like this. I had all these different rows of data. Um, in this case, they're being represented by these FK1 and FK2 columns um, with just some alphabet letters in there. But the, the point is you can see the color coding that a lot of these records are related, right? If I kind of organize these records, you'll see that there are relationships between them. So for example, in this kind of first column, which I've labeled with group ID equal to one, we can see that all four of those are records are related to each other either directly or indirectly so um, like for record one right with id equal to one we can see that our fk1 which stands for foreign key in this example right has a value of a fk2 has a value of b and we can tie that to record um, with id equal to six the second row there um, because the fk2 of our first row matches fk1 of the second row um, right and so if you kind of look at all three of these columns uh, you can tell that all these records are related within each of these three groups and that was kind of the problem that I had to solve is I had a table with lots of different records in it and I needed to find these groups of related records and they could be related either directly or indirectly. And so I knew a recursive query was probably gonna be my best bet for solving this kind of problem because I didn't know how many records, how many rows there'd be within each group. Um, so I would need to write a query in such a way that would be able to find all these direct and indirect relationships that I wouldn't just be able to do by you know joining a table on itself multiple times because I, I didn't know how many of those joins I would need. So let's dive into the code and take a look at how I solve this. All right, so looking at this code, we're gonna take kind of that example I showed you with the colorful records and create our own own version of that by creating a table called relationships, a temp table, and I'm going to populate that table with these records. So you could see I've kind of formatted these so that related records are all together. So I would expect all these records to have the same, you know, final group ID, maybe one. Um, and I've included other test data in here too, right? So, you know, this record here where the where the values are B and A is, is technically the same as this record here, right? So this is a kind of duplicate where just the values are flip-flopped. Um, and I knew my actual data set had records like that and I wanted to be able to dedupe them. So I made sure to kind of include them here. This is a good case for pseudo test driven development, right? Because I knew my edge cases that I would experience. I populated my test data with it so that I knew that my query would work on my test data. Um, if you end up reusing this for anything, right? If you know you have specific edge cases, um, it's always good practice kind of uh, write tests for those or include them in your test data so that you know that the query you write will actually work. And so here I have another record, right, where this is just a straight up duplicate. I have more groups of records that are related. And once again, um, you know, just different ways that these different records are related or duplicated with each other. Um, you know, here's an example where all three of these records are related, but they're, you, you can only find the relationship by joining always on the second kind of column here. And so let me create this table um, real quick. So we have it. And let's talk about kind of the next step. So when I started writing this query, I just wrote it on the data as is, and I quickly ran into a lot of problems. Um, not problems that were not solvable, um, but those things with the duplicate records or where the values are switched between the FK1 and FK2 columns, they required a lot of really ugly logic in my joins and my where clauses. And by the time I actually finished my recursive query, this thing was a monster with these terrible case statements and stuff like that. And I knew it wasn't gonna be maintainable um, or not easily maintainable in the future. So I decided to, before kind of writing the recursive query part, uh, to clean up the data so that the final query would be a lot easier. And this is something I do a lot, um, you know, because maintainability is important for these queries. It'll also help performance, right, depending on the size of your data set. So let's clean up the data first. We can clean up that data by just removing kind of duplicates. All right, so here's another temp table I created called deduped. So this will have fewer records in it. Um, and what we're doing is is deduping them um, by a couple different ways, All right? So here's some of that ugly logic I was mentioning that my initial try at this query had. Um, 
I wanted to always have the FK1 values be smaller than or equal to the FK2 values. So that's where this case statement is coming from. And we'll look at the results in, of this in a minute. Um, but basically, <laughs> if I can guarantee that my column one values are always going to be smaller than column two, that eliminates one of the joins that I have to make. Um, so that kind of cleans things up. Additionally, to get rid of the duplicates where there are two rows with the same values, they're just flip flop with each other. Uh, I decided to create this uh, column called a key hash, which just concatenates the values together. And it always, um, you know, puts the the sorted value first, right? The FK1 value first. Um, or the FK2 value first, depending on which one comes uh, first alphabetically. So um, we'll take a look at that too. But basically by creating that column, and so if you look at that real quick, right, this is what the key hash column looks like. Um, you could see just, uh, let's see, where do we maybe, so all of these orders have been flipped based on the case statement and our key hash matches kind of that sorted column order. If we go ahead and run this for everything and then we dedupe it, we insert it into our dedupe table, you'll see now, um, we have fewer records. So just to prove it, right? So some of these records before, right, where we had QR, SR, TR, um, not only are they now alphabetically in, you know, alphabetical order, uh, but we have fewer records because by sorting them alphabetically, we were able to dedupe them. Once again, I prefer doing this because it eliminates a lot of these case statements and these hash columns that I need to create. My original take at this query, right, had those expressions all throughout the query on my joins in my where clauses, and it was really ugly um, and not very good for performance. So I clean up that data right up front, kind of mini, mini ETL process here. So now to write a recursive query, it's gonna be a lot easier and simpler uh, because we have clean data to start with. So taking a look at the query, we can, we can go down here um, and here's the format for our recursive query. Um, I'm not gonna get into super detail about how recursive queries queries work. I have another video I've linked below in the description where you can see that, but essentially a uh, recursive query in SQL has two parts. There's the initial or the anchor query. Um, so this query runs one time initially, right? It's our starting point for where our data gets processed. And then for the output of that query, um, the second query that's just union all to it is going to run on the output of these records. And then on the output of those records, right, this second query is going to run again. And the second query is going to run again over and over and over again as long as it's producing some kind of output. That's the recursive nature. So if we look at this query, right, it's it's nothing crazy. I'm just assigning uh, these group IDs to my columns. That's my initial query, what it's doing. So it assigns those. And then for each one of these records, we're now just going to do a join um, on, on these results with whatever's left in the table. Um, and because all of our column data is sorted, right, so that FK1 is always less than or equal to FK2, I only need one join relationship here, right? This is one of those things that if it didn't exist, um, if I hadn't kind of cleaned up my data first, this would be a lot more complicated and I would have to be sorted the columns in real time um, and so it, it didn't make sense to, to do that which is why we cleaned it up front and then also just trying to get rid of more duplicates that we find right because as you're joining these different rows together you may find relationships uh, that are several rows apart or several nodes apart and it ends up being a duplicate so we want to get rid of those and that's where once again uh, we're just getting those duplicates um, out of the way using that key hash column that we pre-populated so if we we go ahead and run this whole thing and the only other thing I'm doing after my recursive query is just one more kind of deduping and ordering everything here so if we run this whole query together we'll see our final results where we have these different sets of rows uh, that are grouped together based on this group ID right and we could see all these records have some kind of relationship to each other some of it is a really direct relationship like this record A to B is related to B to E via B. Um, but we know that, you know, A to B is related to E and F as well, right? They belong in that same group uh, because of this relationship with B to F. So this is this was the problem I was trying to solve. I was I was trying to get these groups of records all together and identified. And if you look at these other groups, they have the same characteristic where those relationships are kind of grouped together and we give them this group ID uh, for that unit of records. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I mean, if you do have to write a recursive query, 
to handle these kinds of hierarchical relationships. You can you know, use this as a starting point. I've used this several times in the past for my work and, and, it, and it works well. If you are using SQL Server, there are some other options like the hierarchy ID data type, um, which will maybe help with some of this instead of having to generate our own key hashes. But because I use this code in multiple different database environments, um, I didn't want to use something that was kind of proprietary of SQL Server. So that's why I did it that way. Um, but if you're only using SQL Server, that might be something to look into. And, you know, although this video is about solving my specific problem of finding these groups of records that are related to each other, um, I think it's important to just kind of reemphasize that my original query, right, which you guys didn't see, but it was really ugly. And instead of just kind of leaving it that way or forcing it to work that way, I decided to take a step back, clean it up and clean my data up so that my you know, final query is relatively simple or at least as relatively simple as recursive queries can be. So if you're ever having trouble, you know, writing a really complicated query, see if you can simplify things, maybe clean your data up or add some uh, additional columns to kind of help with your querying process, store that in a temp table or a staging table or something like that. Um, and it will make your final query writing process a lot easier and usually a lot more high performance. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how recursive queries work and how to solve this kind of uh, record relationship problem using them. If it's the first time you're working with recursive queries, you know, don't give up. I know they're a little challenging. I think they're challenging for everybody the first few times you do them. Um, but if you want to take a look at the demo code, just check out the link to my blog post in the description below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.